Okay, then. In this experiment, we shall be determining the acceleration due to gravity using the simple pendulum experiment. Now, first thing first, we are given the following apparatus. We have the pendulum ball or bob. We have the stop watch. We have the pen, we have the stop watch. Okay. We have the stop watch and the stop watch have this uh, calibration. For example, this is the minute, this is the second, and this is the millisecond. Say for example, we are measuring time for maybe a particular oscillation. You start like this. Okay, you start like this. Okay, it's reading. Then let's assume we have kind of oscillation. We stop. All right. Now, how do you read this? Okay, this is seven seconds, right? And this is uh, 69, if I'm not mistaken. So this should be what? 7.69 seconds. 7.69 seconds. Now, how do you not take it back to zero, zero? Just come and press reset and go back to zero, zero. That means that if you want to work with this top watch, you just start then stop the same and then you come here and say reset it goes back to zero so this is your stop watch okay then here we have the meter rule this is the meter rule so we need the meter rule to measure our length of pendulum okay you have to measure the pendulum like i did say earlier this is the pendulum ball and then this is the string already tied to it okay this is a string and then we have the retort stand we have the retort stand and then we have the clamp and then we have the split cock okay we have the split cock this is the split cock now first of all we need to set up the apparatus in this order okay so uh, we keep it in this order. Let's continue. Sorry. Then let's start the theory of the experiment. In this theory, you could see that we are given t equal to two pi square root of l over g. What is t? T is the period of oscillation. L is the length of the pendulum. Y g is acceleration due to gravity. Now, how do we know? what we are going to plot against what or how to calculate um, the value of t for example we know that t is time taken to complete one oscillation okay the number of time taken to complete one oscillation is the period so now it then means that for example if you are going to carry out say 20 oscillations say in a particular time t that means the big T is equal to small t, which is the time taking all over the number of uh, oscillation. Okay, so that means for you to get the period, we have to calculate the time of oscillation first, and then divide it by the number of oscillation to get the period. Now, also this equation will also help us to know how our table should look like. For example, okay, so we evaluate this. In doing this, we take the square of both sides. If we take the square of both sides, that means this will now become t squared equal to 4 pi squared L over G. So it then means that we are going to plot a graph of t squared on the vertical axis against the length of the pendulum at the horizontal axis. Now, if you now compare this with the equation of a straight line, which is y equal to mx plus c, we'll observe that our y is our t square, our m, which is the slope or gradient, is 4 pi square over g, y, the x is l, then c, you can see there's no plus c here, which means that all things being equal, you should have a straight line graph that passes through the origin. That means the intercept in this case is equal to zero. Now, having said this, let us look at the experimental procedure. Now, if we check this procedure, we are told to set up the apparatus in the way it is given to us, okay, in the diagram, all right? Now, having said this, what do we do? We have to set it up. Send measure the length of the pendulum 
from the point of suspension to the center of the bulb. So we'll set it up in this order. And also we are told that such that the length should be what? 20 centimeter. So we will do this, okay? Now first thing first, first thing first, we'll place the split cock, and then, you can see the split cock, the way I'm holding it now, then you place it, the wire or the pendulum, in between the split cock in this order you can see all right then you come to the clamp Ensure as it slightly fitted. Okay, now we have our setup. Based on the question, we are going to measure the length of the pendulum from the point of suspension such that it is 20 centimeter. So that means now what we do is we just hold this string and drag it up. Okay, so you drag it, you can see the pendulum is also moving along. So it is easier for you to do this, all right? Now, on getting to this point, we can see from here, okay? Can we say this is 20? The answer is no, because this is not midway of the pendulum bulb, so we still adjust a little bit further. Okay, good. So until we get to this point, so this is 20, length of what? 20 centimeter. So now what we do next is this. That means we should now have a table of value. First thing, we create a column for the length of the pendulum, in this case, in centimeter. And what's the first length? 20.00, like this. Then let's look at the procedure for that. It said, displace the pendulum, Bob, a small angle from its equilibrium position, okay? Then release the pendulum and start the stop watch simultaneously, okay? Now, if you're going to displace pendulum, you ensure that it is displaced at a small angle, okay? For it to perform a simple harmonic uh, oscillation. So you can see the way I'm holding my stop clock and then the pendulum, so as I'm releasing it, I'm starting my stop clock. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So at the end of twenty oscillation, we have what's the time here now? 18.15 seconds. So we come to our table, and of course, you have a time, a table, a column for time. So you have T, what's the unit of time now? Second. And what's the time? 18.15. Now, it is expected that you carry out this particular oscillation for a particular length the second time. What's the essence? to reduce the error in your experiment. So after you've done the second time, you calculate the average time, and then before you now calculate your period, and then the square of the period, then go ahead to plot your graph. So now we return this back again to the original stage by pressing reset. This is reset, okay? So now we we'll go over it again the second time. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So we have eighteen point three four. Okay, you can see eighteen point three four as your second time. T2 in second. So you add this T1 and T2 and you get the time average. So the next, after that, you now go to the next length. In this case, according to the instruction, it said, okay, measure the time for 20 solution, which I've already done. So I repeat 
the record the time and repeat the experiment the second time for to obtain the time for 20 oscillations which you already done evaluate the mean time and obtain the period of oscillation then repeat the process for n equal to 40 60 80 and 100 so now how do you now measure the one for 40 now still come to this same point okay place your meter rule and then drag this down okay very simple and easy drag it down to you get to 40 are we for at 40 yes okay so at this point you complete you do 20 oscillations note the time t1 time t2 and of course you must record it also on your table of value that means at 40.00 centimeter you have this so you do 20 oscillations and then after that you go to 60 80 and 100 for the purpose of this lecture i would just want to skip some of them but let me verify for the one for the 40 so you now see the trend that based on the equation that we linearized earlier on that as you increase the length of the pendulum what happens to the time the time of oscillation will increase also let's verify that using the second reading so i will restart okay i will, I will set and then start for 40 centimeter length so start one two three one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty you can see in this case now is twenty five point three five okay twenty five 0.35. So we do the second time and verify that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 1920 so 25.41 i see the values are very close to each other so if you do that for 60 80 and then 100 centimeter length you observe the same trend that as you increase the length of the pendulum the time taken to complete the number of numbers of oscillation will also increase so this we're going to complete the table subsequently and then plot a graph and see how it behaves. So until then, have a wonderful day.